Hey guys, Mike from Backyard RC, and I'm here today with a brand new F-16 Falcon. This is a 64 millimeter E-Flight model that flies on a 4S2200 battery. Today I'm gonna unbox it with you guys and do an assembly on it. I'll show you how everything comes and how easy it is to put together. And once we have this one built, we will be doing a maiden on it later in the week as well. So I'm going ahead here, this is a brand new box. I'm just cutting the tape on it and we'll flip it over gently here and take the lid off for you guys to see. This is a foam model. It comes bind and fly from E-Flight. The only thing you need to add is your battery and radio. At a first glance here, the packaging seems to be very nice. Everything's held in there securely taped down well. I'm going to go ahead here and just start cutting the tape on this box. One thing I've always liked about E-Flight models is the packaging. They make sure they don't get damaged in the shipping. They are a quality company for a foamy for sure. So here we go, start to take these out gently. And we'll set that aside and take these out. These are gonna be our wings, so I'll let you have a look at them. That appears to be the wing tube in there as well. So at a first once over, you can see the quality is done very nice on the foam. There's not really any alligatoring in it. It's pretty, pretty good quality. Comes with all the decals already on it, so there's no stickering you have to do. I'm gonna go ahead here and remove the rest of it from the box. So here we have a hardware pack. We have our landing gear and some little nuts and bolts that we're gonna need for assembly along the way. And hiding under that was our manual. The nice thing about these models from Horizon, E-Flight especially, is all the programming instructions are right in here. Basically anybody can take one of these out of the box and get them ready to fly. We'll go ahead next here and remove our elevators. Again, you can see the quality of the foam's nice. There's no, no issues with any of that. And now we'll take out the fun part here, which is our fuselage. So here we have the fuselage from our F-16. At first glance, you can see the detailing's pretty good for a full model. There's some nice panel lines and everything in it. Colors of the paint are nice. It's all, all masked well. Good lines on it. So we'll set that aside again here and see what else we have in the box. I'm going to start to take out all the ordnance for this plane and that's one of my favorite parts about it is it does look very pretty once all the bombs and missiles are on it. So you can see again great quality foam, nice paint job on all of that. There's our next set of missiles there. We'll go ahead and remove the final set. So far, all the quality of the foam's great. There's no issues or defects in it that I've seen at a quick glance. We have our nose cone here. Nice pedo tube out the front of it, a little scale detail. And the last thing I'm gonna remove from the box here is the vertical fin. This model does not have a rudder. It's a three channel fixed rudder on this plane, but I have had one of these in the past and they fly beautifully. So that is not a deterrent for me on this one. At a first once over out of the box, I'm very happy with how everything looks. The quality was great on everything. So I'm gonna go ahead here and set all this stuff aside 
We'll get into the manual and we'll get into the build. So now we're ready to assemble our F-16. We're gonna need a few things to do that. The first thing we're gonna use is medium CA. This is a fresh bottle of Zap medium CA. I have two small Phillips screwdrivers as well as a set of Allen keys. I've gone ahead and I've removed all my hardware from the package. For the sake of the video, we're gonna build it according to the manual. That way you get a feel for the instructions they're giving you. Open this up here and the first thing I notice is we actually have an addendum to the manual. This is for a center of gravity, so it is pretty important. I'm gonna set this aside for now. Once we get into the build here, the first thing it's asking me to do is install the ventral fins. So we're gonna CA those on. Gonna open up my CA here and grab a paper towel. Just give everything I'm gonna glue a quick wipe first, make sure there's no dust or anything on it. Get a good CA joint. And here's my ventral fins. Same with them, just give them a wipe down. So we're gonna go ahead and figure out what's left and what is right here. It's pretty obvious as a nicer side fits to the outside for the look of it. You can see they're kind of rounded to fit in nicely there. So this is my left, that is my right. So I'm gonna go ahead here, set this down. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just apply a little bit of CA along this, a nice thin bead. Set that in. Get it lined up for our angles properly, make sure it's nice and seated. I'm gonna hold it down now. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll repeat the process on our other fin. Set that down. And we're gonna let that cure for about a minute now before we go on to the next step. So now our CA is cured. You can see our ventral fins are glued onto the model there. The next step it's asking us to do is glue on the horizontal stabilizers. So similar process. You can see these just fit in like so and they're gonna get glued. So I'm gonna go ahead here and apply some CA to my gluing surface. Gonna do it on both sides as we have some good contact area everywhere here. And now we're gonna set that in. Again, making sure we line it all up and it's tight. And just hold that for 30 seconds. So far you can see everything goes together nice and easy. It's basically a press fit with a couple glue joints onto it so far, so nothing you can't handle yourself. So we have our first half on, and I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the process for my second half. And again, Set that in there. Make sure it's nice and tight all the way around. And just hold that. So again here, we're just gonna let that cure for about a minute and we'll go on to the next step. So now we have our glue dry. According to the manual, our next step here is gonna be in, to install the landing gear. So we're gonna go ahead and do it according to the manual. We're gonna get our landing gear out here. And we'll start with our mains. Just 
They just press in like so. Gonna go ahead here and put both of them in. And then included in the kit, we have some covers that hold those down. So you'll see those go in like that. And again, we'll do it on this side. And now we just have some little screws that are gonna hold those in. So we're gonna take our Phillips here. And go ahead and screw our gear in. We're just going into plastic, so we're gonna make sure they're tight, but we're not gonna kill it as you can strip them out fairly easily. Unfortunately, I've learned that the hard way over the years of building. And we're gonna go ahead here and secure our second side down. And this is the last screw for our mains. And while we're at it, we're gonna install our nose gear. So here we have the nose gear. It's gonna set down into this slot here. Let's see what the manual's saying about it. it looks like there's a coupler inside. So I'm gonna go ahead here and find out which Allen key will fit that. My first guess, I'm gonna try a 564. I'm too big, so let's try one size smaller. Not the nicest area to work in there for sure. If you had a long set of ball drivers handy, that would help out. But there we go. So you see it's dropped into place there. And there's a set screw on a collar in here, you can see. That's what I'm gonna be tightening now, that top set screw, and that will lock our nose gear into position. I'm just tightening that up. Like I said, it's not the nicest area to work, but I'm managing okay with just a standard set of Allen wrenches. So now our nose gear is good and tight. We can stand the model onto its landing gear. And the next step it has here in the manual for us is to install our vertical fin. So we'll go ahead and get our vertical fin here, do a test fit, lines up nicely, no problems there. This model does want to become a little tail heavy, so go ahead and set that nose cone on. Now I'm going to go ahead here and glue the vertical fin on. Same as before, we're just gonna lay some CA down on the gluing surface, both sides to get some good coverage. And we're gonna press that down. Double check the alignment that everything's good and square. And hold that down for about 30 seconds and let it cure. 
So now we have our vertical fin on. The next step here is going to be installing our wing panels. Those do not get glued on. They actually get screwed on. So this is our wing tube here. Gonna go ahead and get our joiner through and lined up. reason this one's being a little bit tricky to line up but it goes through the hollow space here inside the fuselage so there we go now I got it through just finding the other side I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm just gonna push my wing panels on same thing they have the slot for the tube in them They just push on like so. We'll do the same with our other wing half. And there we go. We're gonna attach our wings now. And to do so, we have button head machine screws. This time it looks like we're gonna be using our 564 Salon wrench. So these screw in from the bottom. You can see all the holes are there for them. So I'm gonna place the screws in the holes. Just set them in for now. Now we'll go ahead and we'll tighten those down. So there's a fair amount of friction on these. They don't feel like the cross threading, it's just a tight, tight screw. Again, I think we're going into plastic blocks there. We're probably creating our own holes, tapping it for the first time. And go this back one's a little tougher because the gear's getting in my way here. So we'll just do it the slower way. If I were doing this not according to the manual, I probably would have put the wings on first myself. But like I said, I wanted to show you how they tell you to build it. These are things after building a few that you'll change up though. You see there's not a ton to them, so if you change how you do it, it's not going to affect the end result. I'm actually going to grab the foam box again here and set it on it. Just give myself a little stand. So now we have our first wing on. We're going to make sure our second wing is still fitting nicely. And we're going to go ahead and tighten this down. Again, this first one's going to be easy. Quite a bit of resistance on it. It goes in nicely like so. And we're gonna do our back one and we're gonna have the same issue with this gear being in our way. So 
We have to go in half turns, unfortunately. But patience and you'll get all these tight with time. <laughs> So guys, the next step in the manual after this is actually to attach the armament, if you wish, all the bombs and missiles. I do love the look of them, but I am going to try and come up with a removable mounting system using magnets. They just want you to CA them down like we did with the tail. Uh, this model gets great performance as is, but it becomes a little bullet if you remove the armament and the gear. So I want to make that an option for flying in the future. So that would normally be your next step, but I'm just going to skip that. And we're going to go ahead right into installing our linkages here. So we have our aileron linkages, which are the shorter of the two. I'm going to go ahead and start hooking these up on the wings. You're just going to push... your Z-Bend through your control horn here. Now I'm gonna check the manual actually quick, see where they want you to put them, which hole off the start. Normally with E-Flight, it is the outside hole. And I'm actually putting them on reverse, not that it would make a difference here. They show the Z-Bend coming through the servo, so we'll do that in the outer arm. Now this is a very, very tight fit to get that through. I might actually have to grab a pair of pliers to get that through the servo arm. Stay with me for a minute here, guys. So I've just got a little pair of forceps. Help me push that through the servo arm. There we go. Once you're in, you just twist your Z-Bend like so. And we're gonna go ahead and hook this up in the outer arm for the time being. That's where they have that. So that will give you the least amount of throw on the surface side, but the most amount on the servo side. And we're gonna go ahead here and do our other side now. As I already know, these are a tight fit. I'm gonna go straight for the pliers. I'm just gonna flip it at me. Sorry guys, that's an awkward angle. I know it's nice to show you, but it makes it hard for me. So there we go. Now we've got this arm in. I'll turn it back to you now, show you what I'm doing. You can see it's just coming through the servo arm there. So now we're gonna push it all the way in to our Z-Bend and twist it onto our Z-Bend like so. And again, we're just gonna hook this clevis onto our aileron, lock it in and put the keeper on it. So now we have our ailerons hooked up. The last two are for our elevators. We're gonna go ahead here and do the same thing on our elevators. So just like the ailerons, these are tight. 
I'd rather them a good tight connection though than loose with slop and play in my surface. So just like so work that in. Get to our bend and twist. And we're gonna hook that up onto our elevator. Same thing, it wants it in the outside hole for now. And put our keeper on. And now we're gonna hook up our final surface, which is the other half of the elevator using the same process. And now that we're through, we're just gonna twist our Z-bend, hook up our surface and put on the keeper there. And there we have our finished E-Flight F-16. The only thing I have left to do on this model is programming, which I will show you guys in the next video. You can see this didn't take very long to assemble out of the box at all. And it is a very beautiful little model for what it is here. You can see it just looks great when it's built. They fly amazing. Stay tuned guys, subscribe, and we'll get you the maiden coming up here shortly.